Well, I can see the change already. Change? In you. You have the look of a man who's just been relieved of a great burden. That's about it, I guess. I love her so much, Dan. So much that without her, I've got no life at all. to discuss it with her. She didn't want to. She ran upstairs. She locked herself in her room. I tried to get her to come out and talk about it. And, well, I, I didn't want to wake you up, so I came down here to wait. I guess after being three weeks in the hospital straight, I was so tired, I must have... Oh, it's honestly. But what did you and Leslie argue about to make her act like that? I mean, locking herself in a her room and leaving without saying anything to either one of us? Laura, it was something extremely personal. That's all you're going to tell me? Well, that's all I think you need to know right now. Extremely personal. That's an answer you'd give to a uh, child, uh, you know. Don't worry about anything, little girl. Here's a cookie. Go away and play. Laura, I'm not treating you like a child. I'm simply stating that I think it is too personal to go into any further than we already have. I'm sorry. I think I'm entitled to know. Whatever is wrong between you two always comes back to me because I am responsible for all of it. That is not true. Yes, it is. And I'd hope that you'd work things out when you got back. So did Mother. She was... she was very hopeful, too. She was really feeling good about things. Have you discussed this? Yes. We've discussed 
missed a lot of things while you were away, and Mother's been much more understanding about everything now that she started her therapy sessions. Just what exactly have you discussed? Well, late last night, for instance. We made up for something I thought she'd never forgive me for, but she did. What was that? It doesn't matter. What does matter is that Mother has really changed. The therapy is part of it, I guess. I know she's been doing a lot of thinking about things, but she really has changed, and now this. Laura, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm just too tired, or I'm still groggy from sleeping on the couch, but I, I can't understand what one thing has to do with the other. But it does. I know that she was waiting for you to get home because she was anxious to start fresh again, and she was really hopeful that you'd work everything out. She told me that. She told you that on the phone because I overheard her. I remember very well, but I still don't Well, that see just any... means to me that whatever you argued about today must have been terribly crushing to her, or she wouldn't have just left without saying anything to either one of us about where she was going. Laura, this will work out as soon as your mother realizes that running away isn't answering the problem. But what is the problem? Won't you please tell me what happened between you two this morning when you got home? It's pointless, though. No, I don't want to go into it again. All right. All right. Let's leave it at that. It is pointless for me to know why my mother left so suddenly without saying anything to me, not even goodbye. Going upstairs, she may have left the note. Was there a note? Yeah, she left it on my pillow. What a minute. Not much, just that she wanted to get away to think things over and that, that, that you'd be all right being here with me. Well, does she see where she's gone? No. Oh, was that about the suitcase, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't in the closet. Dad, I'm scared. My mother just going off like that. I'm scared. Hey, don't be. Don't be, sweetheart. She'll call or she'll come back just as soon as she sorts things out and has time to think about it. Yes. But when will that be? You're right. Do you think that could be her? No, she wouldn't ring without look. Everything will be all right. Just relax, okay? Well, good morning, uh, Dr. Weber. <laughs> It was urgent. Uh, what is it, Monica? I, th I thought you'd be asleep. Gail, I can't, I can't explain right now. But, please, it, please don't, don't ever say anything to Alan, or, or anybody else for that matter, about what time I left the hospital last night, or, uh, or what kind of condition I was in when I, when I left. All right, Monica, I won't. Gail, but, uh, please. Please, I can't go into it. Just know it is the most important thing I have ever asked you. I, I can hear that in your voice. Gail, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, I, I can't talk about this. I don't mean to sound mysterious. Just just know it is vitally important that that you don't tell anybody about about me leaving or what time. Or please don't say anything about you asking me to, to follow me. Of course, I understand. Thank you. Listen, now you, you just try and get some rest, will you? Yeah, I will.
sleeping for a little while and suddenly I I woke up and uh, I just couldn't drop off again. Mind if I keep you company? Oh, when the day comes that I object to the company of a beautiful woman, I won't have to worry about a heart attack. I will have succumbed to one. <laughs> You know, it occurred to me while I was upstairs that I never even asked you how you were feeling when I came home. That was very thoughtless of me, Edward. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, don't be silly. Well, how are you feeling? Bored, frankly. If I have to spend the rest of my life like an old horse put out to pasture, I'd rather be shot and put out of my misery. I don't have to put up with it much longer. Now that this epidemic is over, I want to get together with Rick face to face, discuss this entire situation with him, and decide what's going to be done about it. Is uh, Rick out of quarantine now, too? Well, uh, yes, I, I guess. I mean, I would imagine by this time. Well, good. Maybe you can uh, call him later in the day after he's had some rest and set up some kind of a meeting for me. Edward, I'm, I really don't think we should bother him right now. I mean, after all, it's, it's still early. Well, maybe for him, but it can't be too soon for me. Uh, well, maybe you're right. I don't want to seem selfish. We'll let him rest today. Then we'll wake him at the crack of dawn tomorrow morning. <laughs> I don't really know. I haven't had time to get used to it. Hello, Daddy. How are you, Tracy? Mitch? Mr. Quartermain. Where's Alan? He's out the center. Are you kidding? He was first day home from the hospital and he's out still playing doctor? Tracy, there are still uh, a lot of important things to be done at these centers. I mean, the incubation period is not over yet, you know. Monica, I'm not underestimating the work that has to be done after church today. Mitch and I went down to the main center. We saw the lines of people too deep waiting to be examined. Just that if Alan were there and I didn't know it, I would have liked to say hello. So, you were down at the main center? Yes, indeed. Oh, don't worry about it, Monica. We weren't there to stick out our tongues and say, ah. Well, then what were you there for? Pictures. Photographers got some wonderful shots of Mitch being thanked by grateful citizens for finding the carrier. Oh, really? I thought it was Ann Logan who was responsible for that. No, only incidentally, she gave him the lead. But he followed up on it. If it weren't for him, that kid would still be out there spreading his germs around. Well, uh, then I guess we owe you a great debt of gratitude. No, I'm just glad to be helped. I'm thinking of throwing a little celebrational dinner tonight. What do you think? It's time we get the fun back in our lives. That might be a little bit premature, Tracy. Oh, why, Daddy, come on. We'll invite some fun people like Gary Lansing, Rick and Leslie Weber. But I'm afraid you're going to have to excuse me because I don't feel like celebrating. Well, why ever not, Monica? Because, Tracy, you don't seem to realize the city is still bearing its dead from this epidemic that there are still hundreds of people on the fifth floor of General Hospital who may not survive it. Well, interestingly enough, Monica, I was not suggesting we declare a national holiday, only that we have a small private dinner party. I personally think it's just about time we try to put this epidemic behind us and get back to leading normal lives. Tracy, I think it Monica's going point... going to be that easy to start leading normal lives again, Tracy. Not for those people who have been working with death and suffering.